coughing going around. I, I think it's the pollen, and it's, I think half the church, we've got the flu. I'm still coughing. Oh, boy. But amen. First Corinthians chapter 9. Give me a second here. <clears throat> It's good to be saved. It's good to be in church. 1 Corinthians chapter 9. We're going to look at one verse, verse 22. The Apostle Paul writing here to the church in Corinth. He says, To the weak became I as weak, that I, may, that I might gain the weak. I have made all things to all men, that I might by all means save some. A powerful verse. Let's pray. Father, again. <clears throat> It is good to be saved, and it's good to be in church, Lord, and we ask you to bless the message, and let your words always be spoken, and just take uh, Hank Anderson out of the way, Lord, and let your words always go forth. We love you and thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Now, what I'm going to do now, and maybe for another week or two, is I'm just going to temporarily depart from the James uh, study. We're going we're gonna to do James. I like that. Some good messages come out. Uh, but Easter is, is coming up in three weeks. And I'm going to preach a message where <clears throat> this is probably one of the most unusual messages I think I'm, I've ever or I'm ever going to preach because some people are going to get it, uh, some aren't, and I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to, you know, downplay or anything, but I think it's an important message, and I'm going to be preaching on the thought of evangelism and outreach, which is good, but by, but by particularly through uh, social media and the internet, and, and computers, and, and that kind of stuff. And the title of the message is Socially Acceptable, What Does the Bible Say About Social Media? All right. Paul says that, hey, I am made all things to all men, that I might by uh, all means save some. So is not the internet and the computers and social media, is, is that not some means? It's a way of reaching people. That What is the end result? That he may save some. Right, Jesus said, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. You know, back in the, you know, and we still do this, we send missionaries out to do that, but now through computers and the internet and, and, and social media and different things, we could do that right from our home. All right? Jesus said, go ye into all the world. And I would hope that in 2019, uh, you don't even have to leave your house. You don't have to go to a foreign country to go into the world. You can do that right through computers, all right? Throughout history, the method by which the church performed the Great Commission has changed, all right? Uh, it's been propelled with technology. Uh, the Apostle Paul, he would use the Roman road system or the Mediterranean shipping lanes. That was his method of, of reaching the gospel. He would travel from, say, Jerusalem up to Antioch, or he'd take a, a boat, he'd go, up, go to Rome, and that's how, that's how they got the gospel spread, through trade routes, through shipping lanes. All right? Uh, for, the, for the Protestant Reformation, uh, which was the church was kept in the dark ages for a thousand years, it was basically one church that had the Bible, would not allow their people to own a Bible, and it was only what the priest did, and, and, and that's why, because they, they never really prospered. And what happened during the uh, Protestant Reformation, we can thank, uh, I think his name is Johann Gutenberg, and what did he invent? The press. The printing press. Can you imagine taking those little letters like Bible B, <coughs> I, and, and, you know, can you imagine that? But the, the Reformation from the 1500s, for over 400 years, the church's primary method of outreach was the printing uh, of the Bible. Now, for us today, it's, it's still the Bible. That is true. I'm not going to downplay that. In fact, I, I, it's funny. I want to be talking about technology, but I personally like real Bibles instead of the, well, I got my Bible and my cell phone. See, I see, I'm, I'm preaching technology. I already got some angst in it. You know, but anyway, but for us, the power of the internet, all right? We have the power of the gospel in the palm of our hand. We can reach almost every person in the world, but through social media and, and what our sphere of influence is, we can reach our neighbor, we can reach our friend, we can reach our town. 
And it doesn't take much other than boop, 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 cup of coffee, and I'm in my living room, and that's it. You, we can do this. We are living through the biggest communication shift in over 500 years. Can you imagine just print and press, print and press, print and press, print and the Bible? Yeah, we've had TV and radio the last you know, 100 years. That's nice. But this internet and computer thing is, is big. All right? Now, what do Sears, Blockbuster, and Toys R Us all have in common? Yeah. I know. I hope you're done. I hope you're buying any stock in <laughs> All right? They did not... They did not make the shift to technology. Sears, I mean, when I was a kid, Sears was the biggest store. Every August, you know what my parents would do? My, well, not my dad, he didn't go shopping. <laughs> my mom, he would take me and my brother to Sears. And we were allowed two pairs of pants and a brand new pair of sh uh, shoes or sneakers. And that was it. And it was, you know, the $9 pair of jeans, not the $199 pair of jeans. And, it, and we got it all from Sears. And every year, you got that Sears catalog delivered at your house, and you would, wow, we got to go to Sears. I mean, now we all go to Sears, and it's like, man, this place is a dump. But at one time, they were the largest U.S. corporation in the country. What happened to Sears? The Internet came along, all right, shopping behaviors, uh, had shifted. People no longer wanted to go to the brick and mortar. And hello, Amazon. I go on Amazon Prime, boop, 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 dip, dip, half the price, and it's in my house in two doors. Blockbuster. I mean, how many people remember Blockbuster? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, Blockbuster was people didn't want to spend $8 on a movie ticket, so they go to a Blockbuster store and rent the VCR tape. Or, or first it was VCR tapes, and they'd take it home, and they'd watch the movie in their house. When I was dating my wife, uh, and she hates it when I tell stories, but I came into a little money, and I said, I'm going to impress my girlfriend. I went to PC Richards, and I spent $599 on a brand new uh, VCR player. Can you believe that? That's how much they cost back in the, in, when they first came out. Right? Was, it, was that not true? I mean, I was the first guy on the block, 21-year-old guy, with a VCR player. And I'm like, babe, I'm getting a VCR player. We're going to go to Blockbuster. I'm going to get the microwave popcorn. We're going to sit on the couch. We're going to watch a movie. I'm like, man, I just spent 600 bucks. I could have taken it to the movie theater for like $12, you know? But and what happened to Blockbuster? You know what happened to Blockbuster? <laughs> you, People started getting mad at Blockbuster. Uh, remember what was the number one complaint with Blockbuster was late fees. Remember that? You would rent the tape at $3.99, and if you didn't get it back by Monday night at 7 o'clock, you had to pay like $3 late fee. It was soon discovered that Americans are naturally late, and 30% uh, of like, their revenues were coming from late fees. And then people would try to... And we, Oh, come on, man, can you forgive me this one time? I'm sorry. And people started getting frustrated about Blockbuster. All right? People didn't want to stand in line on a Saturday night uh, haggling over a $3 fee. Hello, Netflix. All right? How many people have Netflix now? Yeah. Okay? Uh, I, I bumped my son's, uh, son's account, I'm one of, so I get it for free, you know? Yeah, so hey. But anyway, Netflix co founders Hastings Reed and Mark Rudolph had seen a market opening with the inventions of computers and the internet. Plus, they had been victims of the late fees from Blockbuster. All right? They then started to uh, you know, introduce their own service. Fast forward, they do over $3 billion in gross. Uh, Netflix is not only a streaming giant, they produce their own award-winning content. Uh, and they are in, uh, the nation's 10th largest internet company by revenue and they are steadily growing, all right? And they say that content is king, and that's important because I want to remind us that our content is the gospel. We have the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, Jesus Christ, and we can get him out on, on this internet thing, Amen. all right? <clears throat> Fast forward uh, to the American church, all right? What happens, what is happening uh, in, in America right now? Church is declining. 
Meanwhile, younger people are leaving the church. They think that church is a little outdated. They can't connect to church. Um, but there's good news. There's good news. There's 168 hours in a week. And what happens is we come to church for an hour, and there's a 167 hours to connect, uh, relay, forward, share, engage the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, through social media and through the internet, and we can use those 167 hours to fulfill our Christian mission. I like to say it this way, seize the 167, all right? I'm a night person. Uh, I see some of you guys up late at night as well, and we're doing stuff. We're putting things on, on social media and Facebook, and people are up at night. Social media outreach and evangelism can be used any time of the day or any time at night. If you follow our Facebook page, what I've been doing the last few months is that I usually put anywhere between three and seven uh, posts on Facebook every day. I put one around midnight, and I call it like the nighttime encouragement. It'll be like a, a, like a picture of the stars, and I'll put, yeah, God created them with the Bible verse. And I'll put Windsor Avenue Bible Church, your, your overnight source of encouragement. I know people work uh, overnight. I know some people are up late at night. Then I usually put one around 8 or 9 o'clock in the morning, and it's always a picture of a steaming, hot, bubbly cup of coffee with the Bible, and it's, hey, morning coffee with Jesus. And what? I want to encourage. It doesn't cost anything. And what happens, people see the pictures, they like it or they share it, and it's a nice way to start the day. And I put some other posts up about different you know, topics and things to try to engage people. Now, we need to remember a few things. Social media can be used for good or evil, just like anything else. Just like we've got the gospel, and I've said this before in a couple messages, like I think it's like four or five uh, porn sites are like in the top 20 most visited websites uh, in the country. That's done for evil. But we can, as a church, and as many churches, put the gospel out there for good. Paul says in 1 Timothy 1.8, but we know that the law is good if a man use it lawfully. All right? It's okay to, to put a Bible verse up. All right? The beauty of the di digital age Unlike many other technologies, like I said, I paid like $599 for a VCR player. It doesn't cost anything to, to get a Facebook pro profile, to go online, all right? And, you know, unless you're paying, you know, unless you're paying for the, the internet service. I mean, you go to a coffee place in your friend's house, even the church here, we have free Wi-Fi. In fact, we're going to do a little, a little thing later on in the, in the middle of the message here with that, all right? I'm, I'm, I'm into this stuff. We, we, we can do this stuff, all right? Most social media accounts are entirely free to create. Blogs and websites. We have a church website that costs us like $149 a year to run. We're on the that, that's, 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 that's easy money, all right? Podcasting, video creation. With a smartphone here, I can record my sermon or I can record the choir, and I do that sometimes. It's in HD, and I created a free YouTube account, and you can watch, I don't know if anyone wants to watch me, but you can, for visitors that want to check us out, you can see the, the, the service in HD. That's kind of neat, and it doesn't cost us anything. It's What it costs me is my time, and the old saying is, if you like what you're doing, it's not worth anyway. I like what I'm doing, so it doesn't, it doesn't cost me anything, all right? Gone are the days of needing to book uh, a, a professional photographer or a video production studio or paying expensive fees. I just put the phone on, hit the red button, and I'm good to go. All right? And that's easy. And then I just upload and put it on, uh, on, on, on the YouTube channel. All right? The church exists for nothing else but to draw people to Jesus Christ and to make disciples. And one of the tools, and I'm not saying this is the only tool, but you know, we want to learn from Netflix and, and Sears and, and Blockbuster, is that, hey, if we don't get in this, this internet high tech stuff, people are going to ignore us and we're not going to be able to reach. So we need to reach people, and one way is through the internet. Paul says, I am made all things to all men, that I might by 
all means save some. Paul's saying, hey, if I can use this internet, and I might not be an internet guy, but if everyone's using the internet, well, hey, I'm going to be just like them, and if I can use the internet to save some, then that advances the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. All right? Social media is like a giant free megaphone that we can just shout out the gospel for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It, we can get the message out of the good news to the community, to the masses. The, and the more that we can equip myself and you guys to share the positive things about church, the gospel of Jesus Christ, the more uh, exposure people will see that. And it's even a possibility that your friends that you interact on social media uh, are, are going are gonna to likely, most likely visit church. All right, now we're going to do a little test now. Um, I want everybody to take out their cell phone. And I know some of you are already, you have it anyway, because you're kind of like looking at me and you're playing with it. All right? <laughs> we're going to do an example. Come on now, entertain me. All right, everybody take out their cell phone. And if you have Facebook, just go on Facebook. All right? We have free Wi-Fi. Now listen, don't worry. I have, one thing I personally don't do, if you want to be my friend, I'll be your friend, but I don't like check out people's you know, profiles and stalk and all, all that other stuff. Being friends is nice. But I'm going to give you a social media tip on how we can expose the gospel in 30 seconds to 1,000 people. You say how. All right, we've got our cell phones out. All right, you're on Facebook. Now there's a, I, I wish I had mine because I would do it too. And I do do it sometimes. You go to the check-in button. All right? Go to check-in. Now, since you're in our church, you should, we should be able to, we should be like right here. You should see like Windsor Avenue Bible Church. And all you do is you check in. That's all. Now you say, I, I, I can't find it. All right? We just search with the name of the church. W-I-N-D-S-O-R-A-V-E-N-U-E Bible Church. That's all you have to do. And what happens is that your friends will see on your Facebook profile that, hey, let's, let's take Marcia or, or Joanne. So your, your friends will see, oh, Marcia is checking in at Windsor Avenue Bible Church. Oh, she goes to church. Oh, I guess she's a Christian. And what you've done in, in a non-threatening, well, I heard some beeps, that must be good. See, now it's okay to play with the phone and have the beeps, all right? <laughs> And what we've just done in a, in a minute and a half is that you've just showed your friends and, and that you're in church. And what happens is that your friends may be curious. They might say, wow, um, wow, I didn't know they go to church. Or, well, hey, I live 10 minutes from that place. They'll maybe hit our button because now you've checked into our church. And they can visit our website. They can read, uh, watch a sermon. They can uh, see the gospel. And it's, it's all free. Say, say 20 of you did it. I know, some, I know some people are not into this. I get that. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not criticizing it. Some people are very private, and I get that. But if 20 people checked into our church, and each person had 100 friends, 2,000 people would just see the church exposed for free. And it didn't cost anything. Is that cool? Right, we, that, we, all, we all checked in here. All right? Did you know that there are over 2.5 billion people on social media? That's 35% of the world population. In fact, that's, that's the statistics, but in America, it's, it's more than 70% are on social media. This is how we can be all things to all people that we may save some, and it's just little stuff using the social media. Social media can help you uh, be where your audience is, all right? As a church, our job is to help and serve others. The question is, how can we reach out to them? All right? We can't always just go to their door and physically knock on their door, but through a check-in or sharing something, they will then be exposed to the gospel. You and I are ministers of the gospel, and we, through this little free platform, can share the gospel to the community, to our friends, to our family, and to billions of people uh, where they are. We need to go where they are, not where we would like them to be. We want them to come to church. They most likely resist. 
but if they see that you're in church, they may check you out. So we go to them. All right? Evangelism is about bringing people, uh, to, bringing Christ to, the, to people where they are. We need to learn their language. We need to learn their customs, their cultures. And what do you mean by that? Um, I did a thing for about a month. I was trying to reach out to millennials because uh, they're younger. They're the future of the church. And I kind of like was learning the lingo and, and their habits. Millennials are a, a peculiar bunch of people. And I'm not saying that in a negative way. I think they're a lot smarter uh, than we are. They're into experiences. They want to travel. They're into relationships. They're very frugal with their money. Uh, uh, us baby boomers, we just want to you know, buy, a, buy a Cadillac, buy the biggest house, and we think we got it all. A millennial would like to go to Africa and, and, and travel, or go to Tokyo, and go on a vacation, and take a bunch of pictures, and, and soak it all in and experience that. I think that's cool. Right? Millennials don't want to spend the whole, their whole income on a mortgage. They want to live their life. All right? So I was learning the culture, learning, and I started putting out some posts of some like, cool young 20 and 30 year olds hanging out, drinking coffee with the cool haircuts. And, and uh, yeah, hey, um, we, we have to be all things to all people that we may win some. The average person spends two hours and 22 minutes just on Facebook alone. And we do. All right. When you're in the supermarket and there's some person in front of you and they got a wagon full of people, and you're like, oh man, I'm going to be here for like 15 minutes. Well, let's see what's going on on Facebook, you know? Yeah, it's, it used to be, you used to read the National Enquirer when you got stuck on the line. Remember that? That's why now you just go on your phone and you check out Facebook. Checking out Facebook on the, the grocery line of photos or different things can play a, a significant role in reaching out the gospel, all right? Facebook has over two billion users uh, in, in the world. The next one is YouTube. We have a, uh, a Facebook uh, page. We do have a YouTube page. That's 1.5 billion. We, uh, Instagram has 700 million people. We have an, Inst an Instagram account. Now these other ones, Twitter, eh, we got a Twitter, but I think they're kind of bombing out. Um, WhatsApp, I don't know, I don't even know what WhatsApp is. You, when you younger people have to enlighten me. Snapchat, right? Facebook Messenger, we have Facebook Messenger, and WeChat. These are the largest social media platforms. At least I'm on a couple of them. And I see some of you younger people laughing. I'm gonna have to find out what WeChat and Snapchat and you know, all this uh, WhatsApp, and maybe we'll get into that. Did I just rhyme? That made that funny, all right, anyway. Social media can help you influence people, all right? I don't think it's harmless to put a, a picture, you know, a, a nice nature picture and a little Bible verse, all right? We, we're sharing the gospel. We can help and influence people. We are custodians of the gospel. Remember that. We are custodians of, of the word of God. We are the salt and the light of the world, and I think it's very wise to take advantage of these uh, internet and social media stuff uh, platforms. People are on it two hours a day. That's just Facebook. When you include the, the WhatsApp and the Facebook Messenger and texting, and, all, and, and stuff goes up to four, five, six hours a day. Reaching people in the digital age. There are many people who would never accept a personal invitation from you but if they knew that you were a Christian and they saw some, some posts that you had put up or some pictures that you had put up, they may check it, uh, they may check it out, all right? Uh, old friends uh, may never, who you've never seen in a long time, may find you out on Facebook and then they'll find out you're a Christian and they'll maybe come to churches to see you one day. I, I, we've all looked on you know, for old past friends and old buddies and stuff. And it, wouldn't it be good to know that they knew that, that you're a Christian, all right? Social media is a way to educate people. Uh, part of my job as being a pastor is that of being a teacher. That's why I record the, the, you know, the messages on, on the camera. I put them up every Sunday school, verse by verse, 
uh, study of the Bible, I put that on our website as well. People never have to come to our church, but they can watch a message of me, they can, uh, they can see a video of the choir, they can read a Bible study that I've done, it's right on our webpage, it's called uh, Books of the Bible Bible Studies. Social media can help you build a community. Now there's two communities that social media can build. One is the in-house community that we have here within our church. If you're on our Facebook page or, and you see that, uh, we, we, we have our Facebook page, but we also have a private page for members only. And what we, we, sh we share a little bit more uh, heavier content. We also do prayer requests. We message each other. Uh, and then we have a community for the outside community in that we want people in Oceanside and Rockville Center and East Rockaway and Long Beach to know that, hey, there's a Bible-believing church only a few miles from, from you know, their houses that are, you know, that are on the web, they're on Facebook, they're on YouTube, and we want to build a relationship with that. And one way is through uh, putting this stuff out for them to, to see. All right? We also uh, need to use our social posts to communicate the things people actually want to know about our church. That's important. I like the pictures with the Bible verses and those things are nice, but actual pictures of the church or, or the kids ministry or us having a lunch together or the choir singing, people get to see the real faces. Uh, the, the studies have shown like 90% of all people before they actually visit a church have been on their website, have watched the message, have checked out their Facebook page and have like looked at some of the pictures and they've already formed their own opinions uh, about that. Um, you know, listen, we, we can play a little game. How many people before you came to our church and Windsor Church, you actually checked us out on the internet or on Facebook just to say, well, hey, you know, well, I want to see, is, is, this, is this church, are they a bunch of kooks, you know? Are they, they going to break out the rattlesnakes, you know? And they, you know, they, they want to know what's going on. Every, listen, we, we do this. All right? we, me and my wife, when, when, we, when we were in California or we go to you know, Florida, sometimes we check out a restaurant and, you know, and it's like, well, babe, let me see what you know, Yelp has to say. And if it's like one star, terrible food, two star service prep, you know, I'm like, well, we're not going there. All right? People check out the church on social media before they actually come to the church. And I believe it's the church's duty and responsibility to explain itself, show honest pictures, be encouraging, be informative, be teaching, and just being out there. All right? We, we, we're doing this. All right? Another thing is, too often churches are focused on communicating what's important to themselves rather than what's important to the audiences. And that's important because, honestly, the Facebook page and the, and the, uh, the website and the different things... Those are for us, but they're also for the, for the people outside that are checking us out. It's important that they be able to navigate this and find out, out, uh, find out about us. People are curious to what the service is like. They want to see pictures. Uh, people say in, in studies that they, the two important things are kids' ministry and music. And they'll throw in you know, the pastor's messages as, as well. They want to see this stuff before they come out. So that's why we put pictures on. We want people to show, hey, this is our kids' ministry. This is what we do. All right. The, uh, the kids' Easter baskets, believe it or not. I've got pictures on our Facebook page. We create an, an event for that. Uh, we were on Eventbrite, and we're going to soon start doing some uh, advertising. Um, you know, a brother had just asked me, he says, how many kids did we have last year for the Easter buckets? I said, we had 50 kids registered, 25 came. I said, I'm going to go out on a limb, and I'm going to try for 60. So I got 60 baskets, and we're going to do some outreach, and we're hoping to get those you know, people, uh, those, those amount of kids. And you say, well, what about the kids from last year? This is the thing about technology. We have it on our Facebook page and on Eventbrite that if you want your kid to get the free Easter basket, that you register their names and an email address. And what we do is we save the email addresses in a, in a da data bank. And in, in another week, I'll be sending out a blast email to about maybe 100 or 200 people, reminding them, hey, we've got this Easter event coming up. We've got a, a ham lunch, and uh, we've got Easter baskets for the kids. And we're, we're just, listen, the idea is we want to grow the church. We want to make disciples. And this is just a tool. And right now, it's a powerful tool. It's not the only tool. In fact, the true studies have shown 
that the best way that a church grows is that the individual member invites a friend to church. Believe it or not, all of these things that I'm telling you, that's nice, but it's like 80 to 85% of people that grow the churches because their friend personally invited them. The other 15%, that's where you get in the outreach and the internet and, and, and the location of the church and different things. All right? Uh, we have on our website, www. It's the name of the church, Windsor Avenue Bible Church. Com. I'm thinking, I mean, .org. I'm sorry. I'm thinking about changing the name. Sometimes it's like when you're like typing Windsor Avenue Bible. Church, it's like so long, you know. And uh, I'm thinking about like wabc.org or something, but that's already taken. But we have on our church page. It's called the Om New page. And the Om New page is if you're new or you want to check us out, it has, has a picture of Gordon on it, you know, Mr. Smiling Guy with the news kids, I think, talking to them, a couple of pictures of, 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 of church people, and it answers all of those questions. What's your service like? What's the culture like? What do I gotta wear? Yeah? Is it handicapped accessible? Does it? And we try to answer all those questions. Social media can help us in church uh, events and announcements. We're, that's what I'm talking about here, Easter. Social media can help us receive uh, donations. We don't do this yet in our church, but a lot of churches have online giving, and now you can, uh, you know, you can go on the web page and do that. Um, I'm still kind of, you know, low tech in that, but we, you know, it's something that would be interesting to look on. Social media can help people, can help church members when they travel. I mean, when you go on vacation and, and you're away and you're in sunny Florida, you're, oh boy, I sure do miss Pastor Hank. I was, yeah, I can go on the Facebook page and look at his sermon. Yeah, yeah, Pastor Hank, yeah. You're right, like you guys really go on, watch on your vacation, <laughs> watch one of my men. Okay. Hey, maybe. Social media can also help those that are homebound. There are some elderly or some sick that can't get out as much, and just hooking up the computer, we can put the church uh, on, on for them. All right. Social media can help uh, in our advertising expenses. A lot of this stuff is free, but some of this does cost money. All right. And instead of people, listen, let's be honest. When was the last time somebody bought a, a, the Newsday? People are like, what's the news? Come on. Now. All right. You're over. All right. All right. You're over. Most people. Me, I I'm, I read the paper, but I usually go in people's recyclables when I'm. Well, I'm grab papers. <laughs> I think it's like a dollar twenty-five for a newspaper. I'm like, why did I get the news on for free? I, most people don't read the penny saver, the the newspapers, but when they're on their phone, the ads are from our church or any advertising just pops right up, and that's how that's how Facebook does it. You can't just no, I don't, I don't want to look at it. You'd have to scroll up or down. But you, and the law of averages, you know, one out of 100 say, what's this thing with the church? And they'll hit it, they'll click it, and they'll find out, find out about it. Social media helps us as a church get feedback. All right, just like I talked about Yelp and get feedback from the community. And I always encourage people, please go on Facebook, please go on, um, uh, you know, uh, Yelp and uh, Google, and just give us a positive review. The more five stars and positive reviews, people will be like, wow, I guess they really like this church. All right? Social media can help convey your ministry vision. All right? The Bible says where there's no vision, the people perish. And I believe that we need to have a, a ministry vision. And what I put in our, on our website here, our little vision is, and I got some of it from Ed City, which I kind of, all right, I bummed that. Hey, the gospel's free. So, but uh, I put Winter Avenue Bible Church is a multi ethnic, true, multi generational church built through discipleship and love. WABC is a place to believe, belong, become. Welcome home, we're saving a seat for you. And our mission statement is that Windsor Avenue Bible Church exists to, to lead all people from all backgrounds to come and know God, to love God, and to live for God. With God's love, we can serve and bring the community together. Amen. All right, amen. We, we want to explain to people what we're about and what we want to do. All right, social media can help improve your uh, uh, ministry attendance. That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to reach people, and if they click and they see the ads or they go on our website, we want to grow, grow the church. There's, there's nothing wrong with it. Let me put it to you this way. I'll be, I'll be real blunt. We are paying a 28-year-old Jew to invite people to Jesus. You say, what is that all about? Who, who's Mark Zuckerberg? 
He's the guy that created Facebook, right? He's Jewish. I think he maybe he's 30, 28 years old. And we're paying him on his platform to invite people to Jesus. Can you believe that? Imagine if I took a couple of you guys and I'd say, here's $100, go knock on every door and invite someone to church. After like three houses, because the Jehovah's Witness kind of ruined that, you know, you go knock on a door, yeah, hi, I'm Pastor, slam. <laughs> yeah, I like that, slam. Most people don't even answer the door nowadays. But we're paying a 30-year-old millennial Jewish man to invite people. Isn't that funny? And people, we all use Facebook, and that's a good thing. God can use any, any avenue or tool to advance his gospel. He's used wicked kings. He, he can use this internet thing. This, this, is, this is good. We can do that. All right? How can you use social media to help grow your church? All right? These are, you know, now we're getting down to what can I do here? All right? Have staff members engage on social media daily. When I put stuff up, if you're a staff, if you're like the assistant pastor, the piano player, you're in ministry, you can get in on the thing. But it's not just for staff. We can all get in on this. We can share, we can comment, we can like, we can, we can do different things with, the, with the, the Facebook and stuff. All right? Uh, we can create a content that speaks to people's lives. All right? It's not just, hey, you're invited to church, but one of the posts I put almost every Monday is that it's a picture of just a, a man playing with his hands and says, how can we pray for you this week? Please contact Pastor Hank and, and is direct, and I put my personal email in there. And I've actually, after like maybe uh, a couple of weeks, I finally got two prayer requests. Hey, in the name of Jesus, I pray for you, all right? It does, didn't cost anything. We can share that. We can disciple others. That's why I put in the bulletin, you know, the, the, the social media team. You say, Pastor Hank, I didn't understand it that much now, but I want to get more involved. What can I do? We'll, we'll help you, all right? Social media can be good or bad. How can I honor God online? Be holy. All right? Peter says in 1 Peter 15, But as he which is called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. All right? Um, I often you know, warn people about Facebook, and, and, and people have gotten in trouble with this stuff. You don't put the, you know, the picture of, of you at the Christmas party drinking up, you know, bottles with your clothes off yelling at the boss. All right, that's not being holy. All right? Peter says, let your conversation, all manner of conversation. Um, I have to be careful myself, all right? Um, when, to please take this in a funny way, but uh, when, you know, the last presidential election, it was Trump and Hillary, I was all gung-ho in for one candidate, and I was putting a, 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 a lot of funny stuff, and, and I, I, I had to be careful, I'm gonna make sure this stuff is not, it's no curse words, Okay, no nudie pictures, no nothing bad. Okay, and uh, listen, we people want to influence a, a presidential election. I want to influence people for Jesus Christ, and so can you, and so can me. All right. Peter says, because it is written, "Be ye holy, for I am holy." Social media reflects who you are. Paul says in Colossians three seventeen, "But whatsoever ye do in word or do deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks." To, to God and the Father by Him. Guard your tongues, right? guard your heart, and also guard your thumbs now. And we, we got to get a Bible verse for that, you know, because some people, and I've been, you know, I used to engage with like some stuff, and I, I noticed something. If people don't like what you're saying, you just, I'm going to get like attacked, you know. Um, I made a comment one time in my son's Christian school where they invited a rock and roll band to the school. And I was like, I thought you guys were at Christian school. Why are you inviting them? I don't think it's cool. I had like 900 college kids attacking me on Facebook. I says, oh, I'm afraid that these guys are going to find out where I live. You know? I didn't even do anything bad. But we, you know, we have to be wise what we post online. Jesus said, behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Just put the nice stuff out there. I trust God. It'll work out. Social media is a rough and tumble at times. There's cyberbullying. There's different things going on. But again, Jesus says, be wise as serpents and harmless as a dove. Remember, we're commanded to defend the faith. 
Jude says, Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful to me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith. We don't earnestly contend for the faith as much as we should, I believe. And I'm part of this too. Defending the faith, putting a Bible verse, sharing the gospel. We're commanded to do that. All right? You say, Pastor, what can I do? What else can I do? Well, first of all, get yourself a Facebook account or an Instagram account. You say, Pastor, I'm, I'm 85 years old. I don't know what to do. You know what? I think what you can do a workshop. When you, I'll bring my laptop in. I'll hook you up with an account in two minutes, and you can, you can be on the, on the social media team. It's real easy. What else can I do? When you come to church, like I said, you check in. You just let your people, your friends know that you're, you're in church. Give us a five-star positive re review on Facebook, Google, and Yelp. We can do this now. When you see a post on Facebook, um, the, the studies have shown that if you hit the like button, which is nice, Facebook has a thing called an algorithm. And it will do is, based on the interaction, it'll show it to more people. So if you write a comment, well, hey, I think this is cool, amen, then they'll start showing it to more people. And if you share it and another person shares it, next thing you know, we, we've just exposed a nice Bible verse to a thousand people. Share, share, share. Give reason to people to come back to church. Tell them about, hey, they were involved in these things. Stay informed. Uh, I'm going to just throw this out now. Starting tomorrow, uh, I'm going to do our three-week Easter campaign. And you're going to see uh, every day starting tomorrow, you're going to see a theme. One is going to be cross equals love. You know, the cross and the equal equals a heart. Cross equals love. Every day you're going to see one. And I'm going to put Easter's coming, Windsor Avenue Bible Church. There's also some very nice videos of, 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 of Easter time, of, of Jesus on the cross and short videos things. And we're just going to saturate our Facebook page. And I'm ho hoping that you guys can you know, share some of these things. All right. I also encourage you guys to do this as well as the church. If you're on Facebook, make friends with other you know, you know, like-minded church folk here on the church. You know, you can make friends here. It builds the friendship and relationship past just Sunday at 11 o'clock. Uh, there's things that I know about some of you guys I would have never have known unless I was your Facebook friend. Not just that you like to cuddle with teddy bears at 2 o'clock in the morning. All right, not that. But I know some other things. And you guys know some things about me. I, I'm a character. I like to put some stuff. When I start my landscaping business, once or twice a week, I'll take a photo of my lunch. My son says to me, Dad, why do you do that? I says, you're not going to, I got a little cult following. They love it when I put, listen, I eat Chinese food like three times a week just because it's, it's they get, you get the free soup, it fills you up, all right? And I take pictures of there's, there's my lobster sauce for chicken fried rice. Right. And listen, people get to find out things about different people. I put a comment when the Mets won their first game. I'm like, Mets man, number one, going to the world. And then Don, I found out it's a Yankee fan. He's like, well, Yankees are in first place too. And I'm like, Subway Series. And it, me, we're going back as a friendship. Now who's in first place now? 2-0 Mets, Yankees, 1-1. One and, one. and you see, you get to find out things about your friends here. All right? Remember, through social media, you're spreading the gospel. Proverbs 25, 25. As cold waters to a thirsty soul, so is good news from a far country. Paul says to uh, Pastor Timothy, preach the word, be instant, in season, out of season. That's, that's preach, spread the gospel through Facebook and the YouTube and the, all of that stuff. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Remember, social media is the new town square. The Apostle Paul, remember him? He went to Mars Hill. That was the town square. He would spread the gospel. All right. Uh, I used to do this. I haven't done it lately, but years ago, me and a friend, we'd go in, into the city. We'd do some old-fashioned street preaching down in the subways and, and things. That, you know, that's the town square. But today, the social media is the new town square. Like I said before, you can get a cup of coffee, sit on the couch, shoot out a few things, and you've just showed 500 people Jesus Christ. It's real easy to do. All right. Paul said, I have made all things to all men that I might by all means save some. And let's use social media to save some people. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right, let's pray. Father, again, thank you for today. 
And Lord, thank you for this uh, opportunity, Lord, to preach a message. And Lord, social media is important and different things. And Lord, it's not just social media, it's, it's prayer. It's living and being a, an example before others, Lord. There's so many other things, but this is just one part of it. And Lord, we just ask you to just bless our outreach coming up for Easter. And love you and thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. I forgot to work this in the message, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you a little something here for, for a minute. I brought a little something here. Because we all got our smart smartphones, which are basically like computers. Uh, and I was a holdout. Please, please don't think I'm some tech guy. I mean, a Galaxy S7. In fact, I went to buy a, a new case for it a month ago, and the guy's like, why don't you get a new phone? I'm like, it took me three years just to figure this thing out. I am not going to get another phone. Just, give, just give, give me the case. Everything works fine. I know what I'm doing. I know how to share. I know how to copy. But uh, I have, before I had my Galaxy S7, this was my original Casio. <laughs> It still works because I charge in the battery and I save everything. I can take a picture. I think the pixel is like a three. You know, I come in like, you know, like all blurry. But uh, I mean, I, and I bought my Casio because it was in my business. It's like, I can drop it. It's like heavy duty, case, waterproof, the whole thing. I'm like, I still like this phone. The only thing is I forgot how to turn it on. I'm like, I forgot, you know, gotta hit the end button on the older phone, but you hit the end button. Now you, now you got the button on the right. I got my little flying helicopter. That's cool. I love the, I got my, this was one of my original phones too. The, one of the first LG flip phones, like, you know. Yeah. This one, I got to charge it somewhere, but it should work. My original first cell phone, when I got back in the 90s, where it was like $59 for 60 minutes. There was nothing called unlimited plan. I got the original brick with the, with the antenna on it. And I'd say to my wife, we can only talk like 60 minutes a month, or, or else we gotta pay, like, you know, talk about Blockbuster and the late fees. And, uh, you know, she called me, yeah, can you bring home some milk? And I'm like, counting, okay, that was 45 <laughs> seconds, you know, logging it down and all that. Now you get everything for free, but uh, I'm, you know, I still, I still use my Sony cassette Walkman. I've got like 15 of these too, believe it or not. So I, I, I'm old school, I got about 5,000 cassettes. Believe it or not, not music, all Bible stuff. It all works. Got my tapes. Everything's good. I know, I know, my, I know. Getting the old, I know. I'm, I'm having a little fun today. I'm not, but anyway, that's the message. Um, and I think uh, our praise, the WABC Edge praise team is going to come up and sing a song. Thank you so much, and thank you for the message. <laughs> 